And good afternoon, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I'm with LogicalSignals.com and also TradersHoppingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Thursday, May 27th, 2021. Again, not much to be reporting, although it does appear that in the S&P, we have at least completed that small corrective phase and started the next five wave sequence higher, uh, which will then hopefully move us to new highs and get us up closer to that 4,300 area. And so during Globex overnight, and actually it was, um, yeah, it was pretty, pretty late uh, yesterday evening during Globex that the market did move down to 4,177 and three quarters. And that did put us into a new low below what we saw on uh, Tuesday, I think it was. The 25th, yeah, where we had reached 4,179 and a quarter. So getting below, that's all we really needed in that structure. And then the, the market did rally very strongly, very nicely, right off of that uh, opening levels this morning. <clears throat> Actually, it started to rally before. So by the opening, we were already heading higher. Uh, and that is um, good because that's exactly what we were looking for to announce that the correction's over, buyers are back, we're under the next sequence, the five wave sequence up, and that all is great. In fact, we finished the day <clears throat> right below that high at uh, 412, 4,212 and three quarters. So we finished at 4,211 and one quarter. So I am feeling that with with the beginning of the Globex session, which will begin in about 45 minutes, <coughs> excuse me, that we'll get above that. And that should hopefully then either overnight as well as tomorrow, <coughs> excuse me again, <clears throat> pull in some additional buying on that breakout. Now, unlike the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ has not appeared to have completed that uh, corrective phase that, and it remains range bound. And um, so hopefully that they'll both be catching up with one another. In fact, the NASDAQ will be catching up with the S&P and not the S&P catching up with the NASDAQ because <clears throat> that would pull the S&P all the way back down to 41.75, should it turn. So tomorrow, being that it's the uh, last day before the three-day weekend, we may be into some pretty tight pre-holiday trade. So it could be rather on the slow side so I urge caution when you're trading because you don't want to get into something that you cannot get out of. Um, so be cautious if you're going to be trading much past the opening. In any case, my analysis would be for tomorrow that I'm going to say that, that we should continue higher. And in fact, what I would like to do now is just add our... Actually, let me go back and let's take that off because that was basically our way four and uh, we don't need that one anymore. And where I'm going to go now is we're looking for this next wave to kind of come in here. And yes, it's gonna be the fifth wave. So hold on, let me, let me start that one over. I'm gonna change our drawing tools. We're gonna go down to this one. And I am going to start here because this will be, there's a much, come on. Not doesn't want to do it, right? Come on. Let's bear with me, well, there you go. Okay, so we're gonna go because our fifth wave, which is what I believe we're gonna be going into, is gonna be related to the third. So that's where we're gonna start putting our Fibonacci. Now I'm going to pull this in. So we're going to see how beautiful this should end up. Because the first most common relationship between the fifth wave and the third wave is that the fifth wave will be 0.618 times the length of that third wave. And you can see that's 4,275. And that is right up into that area where we're finding we think we should be going because we were looking for at least a break back above 4,200. We've gotten that, but we at least we're thinking that we're going to get up and we're going to break the highs, which we should do tomorrow. 
And then it's off to the races. And so it's all gonna be on the structure. So in, in reality, I'm thinking that once we get up there, we may have a slight pullback because this should finish wave one of five. Then we get a little pullback for wave two and then we start to move. So we may not get the, the real push tomorrow. We'll see uh, because pre-holiday, it could be very slow and we might get up to those new highs and hang out, hang out, and then maybe just kind of pull back a little bit. We'll see. But we have resistance at 4,215, which I don't think should be a problem. 4,238, which you know, could cause a little pause. And then 4,256 to 4,275, that's a zone which is possible to complete the wave. Uh, but I don't think so. I think where we might end up is here or here like closer to 4,300 to maybe 4,015, all possible to 4,335. We shall see. Uh, it, 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 yeah, we're gonna have to wait and let the market tell us, uh, but I definitely would feel that this wave should get up to here and within this zone right there, 4,275 to 4,300. <clears throat> And I don't suspect it's going to happen tomorrow unless everybody's just in a hurry and they want to be into those positions before that Memorial Day weekend. But history tells us that there's going to be more position squaring and in terms of people who are going to at least go home neutral and or totally pleased with their positions that, that if they're long or short. So downside should be quite limited, actually. So once we do get a finishing point to this. And I, again, I'm expecting it to get above at least, you know, uh, 4,213. Uh, but maybe it gets up to here. Then you can, from that low at 77.75 up to wherever this thing tops out, draw uh, just a bit not your retracements. And that'll give you the little bit of retracement that we should see in uh, a small wave two. And I'm not expecting this thing to turn around. Stranger things have happened. If they decide they don't like it and they start bringing the market down, then again, we're going to have to rely on our uh, moving averages. And if they start to break, we, we have support down here at that low and then just below at the hourly 200-day moving average at 41.72, we're going to call it. Breaking below that would suggest, once again, that this was a wave A, this is a wave B, and now we're falling in a C wave. And if that's the case, we're going to be looking for an eventual slide all the way back down here. But right now, that's an alternate count. The preferred count is that the rally continues and we start reaching those highs that we've been expecting for quite some time. And again, uh, holiday weekend, pre-holiday trade tomorrow is what I am expecting. So just be careful when you're trading. Um, and, you know, with, with the volume and, and how the moves are going. So you don't want to get stuck in something that you're not going to be able to trade. And also that the markets are closed on Monday for the Memorial Day holiday. So our next update, I will put it on Monday afternoon once the Globex starts so that we get an idea of what, what we're looking at for uh, Tuesday morning. In the meantime, have a very safe and enjoyable Memorial Day weekend. And the next update will be Monday, the 31st of May.